ho, ho. What up, what up, what up? It's yours truly, Mr. Telefero. My annual Christmas giveaway is on the way. Last year, we did it on YouTube. This year, we're going to do it on my Instagram account. So if you want to win AirPods, gift cards, and a lot of other stuff, you want to make sure you're following me on Instagram. At is Mr. Telefero. You're in the running to potentially win some AirPods and a lot of cool gifts this holiday season. Enjoy the video. What's going on? It's yours truly. Just say it with me. They call me Mr. Telefero. How's everybody doing out there? Look, when people pass away, people take it hard. I mean, seriously, they take it really hard. A lot of times people play the blame games. We blame each other. We blame selves. Everyone plays the blame game, right? It's just you're so mad at the situation. You're so mad that someone's been taken away from you that you just play the blame game. Sometimes just, a lot of times unfair. Even on my platform, we've seen over the last few years, People are mad when someone passes away close to them, especially in the artist community, somebody who fed a lot of people, very impactful in their communities, people are upset. Here's another one of those situations kind of playing out on social media. We lost Juice World last weekend. He apparently OD'd on uh, some type of pill. Looks like it's Percocet. We don't know that to be true. Obviously, his autopsy was done on Monday morning. We'll know more details soon. But look, bottom line, it looks like this was a drug-related situation that led to a seizure, which possibly led to cardiac arrest. And um, that's how we lost Juice World. People are upset. So I want to post on your screen one rapper, Joyner Luke, is his kind of his opinion on the whole Juice World situation. He wasn't necessarily attacking Juice World specifically, but he was talking about just the rap culture leading to another death. Let's talk about what Joyner Luke has said, then we'll get into another rapper responding uh, to Joyner. Joyner said... Juice World was 21. He was a product of our generation of rappers who glorified drugs and made it cool. I'm blaming y'all niggas for this shit. All that lean and pills niggas glorify and talk about. You teaching the kids to do it. Shaking my head. You happy now? Rest in peace, Juice World. You gone entirely too soon. G Herbo must have thought that Joyner Lucas was attacking the legacy of Juice World. So he put up a long response to Joyner. He said, Joyner's a fucking clown. Niggas don't know what niggas going through. Niggas ain't trying to be cool. Shorty was on top of the fucking world. You think he was trying to fit in? If that shit was easy, Shorty would have quit. Shorty ain't see none of this shit coming. He ain't see millions coming, um, fame coming, none of that shit. I got 50 homies dead on my granny. Nigga been shot, been in the streets over 10 years of my life. Been addicted to Xans, Leans, Percocet pills. Still smoke weed every day, all to this day. Uh... I was blessed with a strong enough mind to quit that lean and that other shit when I want. I've been to detox twice. This shit is a daily process. Juice made some of his best music in the world with his own style. He ain't have to fucking fit in. Nigga be having to self-medicate. He was a star. He can't go on stage thinking about the demons he's fighting in his head. I can speak about this shit. This shit always deeper than what you see. So don't speak on shit. If you can't say it once I done uh, done it or I relate to it, all right? So that is G Herbo responding to Joyner Lucas. And Joyner has a response to G Herbo. I like this. Uh, Joyner said, Herbo, my man, I never said Juice was trying to be cool or trying to fit in. Bro was a, geni Bro was a genius and absolutely had some of the best music in the world and definitely had his own style. I fucked with Juice. ADHD was 100% Juice inspired. I think you misinterpreted my message, bro. I do know that Juice battled his own demons like everyone else. We all got them. Nobody's perfect. Not even me. I got my own shit I go through. I think what's frustrating to me is the fact there is an entire hip-hop generation who's been influencing these young kids for years to do drugs and lean straight up. Telling you to do it. Telling you it's cool. Telling you it makes them feel better and you should do it too. You turn on the radio and all you hear is Dirty Sprite this and Papa Molly that or Xanax and all kinds of shit. Glorifying it to the point that if a nigga was thinking about doing it before, then he definitely gonna try that shit now. Juice never glorified it. He actually said he's not proud of it in his music. There's a difference. He talked about what he was going through. That's not glorifying it. That's what he was supposed to do as an artist. I'm not blaming him. He did it the right way. I'm blaming the niggas who glorified it and made it easier for these young kids to use drugs as an outlet in the first place. If that makes me a clown, then, you know, he put up the emojis. I guess I'll be that. Sorry for your loss. Long live Juice World, bless up. Yeah, I like what Jordan Lucas did right there. I like everything Jordan said. And I'm not finna go at G Herbo. G Herbo's a cool dude. G Herbo's upset. Again, when you lose someone, if anyone says anything out of pocket, especially with it being this close to Juice's death, uh, 
people are gonna go off. That's just how it is. And I'm sure G Herbo, hell, we're talking about self Medicaid. He, he might have been on some then. Like I'm not saying he's like on any type of strong drug. I'm saying he might have been lit then. Obviously coping with losing one of his homies, right? Like it, it happens. Again, it's a very emotional time. But I like what Jordan Lucas did right there. I have to admit, I really like what Jordan Lucas did right there for a lot of reasons. Number one, he wasn't disrespectful. He wasn't disrespectful to Juice and his legacy. Uh, he wasn't disrespectful to G, G Herbo, even though G Herbo called him a clown and all type of stuff. You see, Joyner understood the moment. He could have responded to, to Herbo and be like, yo, man, fuck you. That's how a lot of beefs get started. Just somebody doing something while one person's in a very emotional state, right? Not at their best. But Joyner didn't do that. He said, you know what, bro? I know you emotional right now. I wasn't trying to uh, spit on Juice's legacy at all. What I'm saying is rappers before Juice World uh, created this narrative that doing this type of stuff when you're down is cool. They made it cool. And look what people did right following behind them. I love what Joyner did. Also, uh, Joyner hopped on this while the kettle is hot. What I mean by that is we need rappers to start having this conversation these conversations about drugs in the game, the lean usage, the pill popping. Now, I know it hurts. Again, people are really grieving over losing Juice World. This dude, his listeners are up 3 million people this week since he passed away. He's, I mean, listen, people are grieving all over this country, all over this world, really. He do, do have a lot of fans to be such a young artist. But we got to start having these convos when the kettle is hot. We just can't wait. Months down the line when nobody's talking about drug usage in our community, we got to start having these tough... I know it hurts, but we got to kind of start having these conversations while the kettle is hot, while it's on people's minds, while we can really impact change. Now, maybe a day or so after Juice World's death, maybe it's too soon. But again, I don't want to wait too long either because we have to have these conversations because right now what's happening is just more people... As I call it, drug rap becomes more popular. Uh, more people are looking towards that for their outlet over any other type of music, and I think that speaks to the entire, like the entire status of the rap community right now. Not just the drug rappers out there. I think a lot of these kids and a lot of young people are going to the drug rap because they feel like their artists are opening up to them more, talking about more than some of the other artists who are making music trap records that have literally nothing in it. So I think it's the whole state of rap. Don't just blame one side of it. Call a spade a spade. A lot of these kids and younger people, fans of music, they're going to some of this rap because, damn, at least with the drug rap, they open up to us. They tell us they fighting demons. You dudes ain't talking about shit. I'm, can I be real? I'm sorry if I'm being too real for you. I'm just saying. So I want the whole rap community. I feel like we could do a better job. Media as well. We ain't a, look at what we cover. You know what I mean? Look at how many videos I didn't did about call us out. Like let this I'm not immune to criticism. Everybody has a part in this. If we all acknowledge that, I think everything will be in a better place. Stop just calling these young artists out. Start calling out the futures. Cause, Cause that's who Jordan is talking about. The futures. The Waynes, as much as we love them. I'm a big Wayne guy, big future fan. They're two of the ones, and I guess I'm the only one that's gonna keep it a stack. They're two of the ones that promoted this culture more than anyone. They benefited more than anyone. In 2015, Future's lead record off of his two albums he put out, back-to-back -back weeks, the chorus of that record went Percocet. Molly Percocet. That was the chorus. That was his lead single, Mask Off. Y'all remember? Uh, Lil Wayne, I don't even got to get into Wayne. Wayne, I mean, literally, Wayne got so comfortable talking about drinking lean. That nigga had an ad-lib for uh, literally one of his ad libs was him drinking lean. He literally had the cup. That was one of his ad libs. You could hear him pouring up the cup with the double cup it literally in the background. That nigga was pouring that shit up in the midst of his verses. Like that's how comfortable he got with talking about lean. I just think we need to start having these conversations because I'm no I'm no better than Wayne rapping about it, than Future rapping about it, because I listen to it. Right? I'm no better. You know better. We all like it, but we know that it's look these kids. I'm 25. I also consider myself a lot older than my age, just from a mental standpoint. I'm able to bump Future, bump Lil Wayne, but still I got a, a, a good enough, uh, I got control over myself enough to not want to go do lean just because a rapper is talking about it, saying it's cool. I ain't got to pop a perky when I'm down, when I'm broke or whatever's going on in my life. I'm good. I find other ways to cope. Go to the gym. 
Hell, I might go drink. I might go get wasted off the bottle. I might go buy me a, a, a bottle of Crown and a Four loco. But that's as far as I'm going to take it. Everybody ain't got that. And I ain't mad at nobody who's trying to find their self and find what's like their best coping mechanism. Maybe it's shooting basketball, going to the gym, whatever it is for you. I got good mechanisms. I ain't bragging off of them because some of them are not as good. Sometimes I eat a lot. Sometimes I drink a lot, whatever. But I don't go to the pills and the lean. I got a good enough control over myself. Maybe you don't have that. Maybe someone doesn't have it out there. A lot of these kids are actually living out these lyrics that other people are just talking about. So I think it's just a healthy conversation to have in the culture. I like what Joyner and, and Herbo did, and I haven't seen a, a response from Herbo. Hopefully behind the scenes, they could kind of talk to each other, hash out whatever that was. Joyner didn't mean no disrespect by it. He's, he's hurt just like Herbo's hurt. Everybody's hurt. We lost one. I mean, Joyner admitted he was a fan of Juice. So y'all let me know what y'all think. In the comment box below over this conversation between Joyner and G Herbo, I tried to open up to you guys. I went a couple minutes too long. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just what I do. I talk a lot. All right? I'm out. I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the coach. I got the kids. They tuned in. Tuned in. We locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. You watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV.